one of my pet peeves is why do all video artists only make dark work for dark films why yeah. can't they make happy films like yeah. but yeah. that but that's my pet peeve like oh it's like see movie.com like all the all the documentaries and they're all dark <laughs> noir films <laughs> but it's also very hard to make i think it's very hard to make movies about trauma or darkness without either sinking into that darkness or being all like positive and all like i call it toxic positivity where everything gets fixed and if uh, some explain that? the truth what, what is toxic positivity <laughs> Can you <laughs> It's it's something I say. So I mean there yeah. so that That's fine. That has to be a, a like a red flag. I yeah. but it's like sab acha ho jayega. Think think positive. Yeah, what is this think positive? I'm like yeah, think positive works to some extent, but then there is a reality. Like if someone comes and tells me they are feeling anxious because of the war and I said think positive, what is the like this person is anxious this they this they might be bombing they they're talking about nuclear nuclear armaments two nuclear powers there so oh, but it's like, in- but it's like that movie life is beautiful no where that guy they're in the concentration camp and he he doesn't want his son to go through the trauma so he gamifies it and he gives him a sandwich and he jokes about it and he's like be happy be happy so it's that kind of vibe there are positive people in the world hello yeah there are and i'm not positive people can also feel the difficult emotions yes of course And, but but the, uh, how somebody might feel extreme negativity you can't somebody feel like be high on life and be extreme positive even if the situation around him or her is uh, super negative so i i would okay i refrain from saying positive and negative when i talk when we talk about emotions because okay just before we jump in what is an emotion if you are saying something that that is like insulting and i laugh or i'm like yay why were insulted me so cool does yeah. that even make it? no that's no. crazy but, yeah yeah but and if you say a joke and which is clearly a joke yeah and i get i am like oh i start crying does that i mean do you see the yeah i doubt my joke <laughs> there's no thing but then if you say if you say something funny and i laugh and i feel good yeah. that means what am i doing i am responding to my environment true correct yes so let's say tomorrow uh there is let's say like like for example like when i lost my dad i was in throes of grief yeah like i didn't process it does that make because i that means what are my emotions saying that there is a loss true and it's a deep loss now if i started like celebrating then there is something is missing or when i'm celebrating that means the information is or my relationship the was we process something off there some so your emotions in a way are giving you information about the world hmm they're telling you something yes emotions help in that sense they have a function they're just not there yeah like talks I mean, it's it's, it's a real thing it's a real thing like the yeah this actual haptic feedback it's like it's it's giving you a live feedback of uh, what your environment is throwing at you yeah so now let's say some, we have a negotiation saying you will give me 10 rupees and you don't give me and i get angry yeah. it means something i have been wronged yes that's why i am angry but and that, that anger but that's obvious no i understand but that's like yeah. i don't know what you're getting at I'm not understanding. So, what, so now, very often we think of anger or sadness as negative emotions, undesired emotions. Don't express anger. Don't feel angry. Don't feel sad. Yes. You only have to feel good. You only no. You have to feel both. My wife was raised that way. Like it's like girls don't cry. Girls don't shout. Girls don't speak high. Yeah, yeah. She keeps she telling knows. me this, and she's like, "Oh my god!" It's like I'm shocked at how you guys get angry. Or you know, uh, I mean, I, I. I I get angry too, and I just feel like it's an emotion, but it's unwarranted or you know, whatever. Yeah. So, oh, so you're saying yeah, that there's no negative and there's no positive. It's because of yeah. yeah. So, if someone is only like I am, like rainbows coming out of my ears, I'd be like, okay, hold on. Yeah. It can't be always rainbow. Some days there is going to be clouds. True. Same way, only clouds. Then I'm like, no. Some days there will be rainbows. So let's. see what's happening and that happens to everyone true listen cross culture 
but then some people gravitate towards uh, drawing an inference yeah. from from their sadness so much that they become dark negative I, i'm so, going to use yeah. the word negative i'm going to use the word negative because i don't have i don't know what word to use but you know you find pretty grumpy people yeah you grouchy grumpy people you find little it's an expression that doesn't mean that there's a problem yeah. <laughs> like that's maybe that's how they want to see the world and i wouldn't go fixing them yeah okay so okay let's come back to core question why is it important i want to ask you are you done i am sorry were you con- were you saying something yeah, I- I wanted to say one more Sorry. thing. One of the things that we really, one of the things I also we really see is men's mental health. And because this thing that you said, no, girls don't shout. Yeah. Boys are not supposed to cry. But boys are supposed to be strong. Boys cannot. Boys cannot have a mental health condition. Talk to me. Talk to Men me. cannot Talk have a mental health condition. I and I have is, cried, and my wife is worried about this. And I talk to me. Yes. So that and men cannot be anxious. Hmm. you're a man you have to, and it takes so much work to just create a space to let them feel it's okay to be vulnerable yeah but that's, okay. that's just like then you're like uh, you're not going to get the work done that's not true like that's i would like 15 saying, hours a day on this sometimes it's, you would cry 15 hours a day I, every day i'm sorry You're saying you would cry sixteen hours. No, I'll work. I there's so much work to do. There's so much, uh, uh, there's so, so much hard work, and I'm so anxious all the time. I'm anxious, but I can't tell anybody because it's like, it's like it's just work. It's like what do I do? I have a friend who's in a corporate job, hates his job, makes a good, good makes good salary. That's all. That's there's the carrot hanging in front, you know the salary. and yeah. uh, uh, it's it's been raised since childhood to either join the army or you know be a corporate or you know i mean we've, we've also we've also been secretly trained by the whole society you know it's like if there's an accident in the night i have to be the soldier if yeah. i'm walking with a girl you know it's like uh, i am sometimes conscious of this like i feel like okay if if something happens then it's my job to fight the bad guys and i have to live with that i am not the guy who's going to fight but i'll have to i'll have to give my life in the night if there's a fight or if if you know there are things that are not i'm completely out of my uh, comfort zone and you're allowed to feel absolutely scared but I'm, then you cannot say you i mean somewhere yeah. you are conditioned to say that i cannot say i'm scared yeah i have, a, I, have i have a cousin who takes care of like five people uh and i and the responsibility is insane and i feel like sometimes the you know i hear things like uh, 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 women saying i'm going to get a lot of shit for this but you know that it's 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 really tough being a mother and stuff like that you know taking care of babies in the house i'm sure it is tough and they have you know the people do speak about it but like i know guys who go through shit and they don't have a expression outlet they don't have an outlet to actually say what they feel like and because they don't talk uh, and i they even, don't even have the language yeah they don't, they don't know the word Yeah, I don't even know how to sometimes have a conversation with my best friend about something very private, something that that I'm going through and I'm scared about. I they are, we'll just giggle, laugh, have a beer, and be like, I'll be like, okay, I'm okay. And I think I'm raised that way, so I feel I'm socially engineered that way. But the more art I'm doing, I've started realizing that hey, you know what, I can talk about it. But then my friends like, I'm not an artist, and what you just said is like fucking too personal. I don't want to know. like that's beyond uh, it's you're expressing too much so i just want to know what's the what's the role what's the role of art in in the mental health space and like you know what is um, uh, like again i'll come back to the core subject like what is expressive arts therapy because how much can you express you can keep expressing if you have to it's like when when do you say when do you say enough is enough like when would you say somebody's like healed or if someone has gone through a trauma and you do you work only with people who are traumatized or is this something like you know what everyone should do like a psychiatrist go regularly like how you would visit a doctor okay so first, first thing i am a psychologist there are two professions psychology and psychiatry psychiatry okay. is from the mbbs where they are giving medication where they prescribe medication psychologists are usually more uh, process based therapeutic like talk or the arts and A lot of times we work together depending on what the client's need is. So you're not allowed now, to do medicine. No, I'm not okay. because I don't have a medical background. 
so when do you hear somebody say the right things and you're like okay done this person is fixed now okay so usually usually not always hmm. usually when people are unable to function is when they seek help and they realize that they are unable to function or something is not right and something is not that's when they seek help and the idea is to support the person till they are they feel confident to function in the world and it is not so there are certain therapies that are very like eight that eight sessions or 24 sessions and then there are there's work that can go on as long as the client needs mm. so there is no one uh, way to do it uh now i so when so when the client comes in they have, we, there is a set process of setting goals mm. and then we work towards those goals so yeah. it's not all like magic and uh, stuff there is a very step by step process and then long term work we do check ins we take feedback so it's a very it's sign it, it is a process yeah and when the client reaches the goal let's say someone is for very 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 loose example i cannot go to my exam and i'm unable to write or i blank out because i feel so anxious yes you work with the client the client is able to go to the exam do it and client is functioning well and then then we start uh, termination now termination doesn't happen okay you wrote the exam finished okay then instead of seeing you once every alternate week i'll see you once a month then once two months then once three months once in six months once a year but the support exists till the client needs true so it doesn't like uh, that needs the client to have an insane amount of conscious uh, uh that kind of to be able to be self aware is also part self- of yeah self awareness is required and true. it is one of the how would you have access to uh, a housewife you know village in india who doesn't even know mm. she has who's i'm i'm assuming i'm sorry for this but i'm assuming that she's not aware or he's not aware uh yeah so that's also another it's now this where i feel psychology goes beyond the individuals the urban setup like how much of our literature is in regional language how much of us are trained to do therapy in regional language how much of us understand regional culture and there was this rant i was just having just yesterday with one of somebody else they were like so why bangalore ke bar kisi ko mental health nahi hai so that that is a real real struggle yeah, yeah. and and let's say na let's so even now someone even in urban areas when people reach out they get almost like they're discouraged because everyone around them is saying that you're imagining it mm if you are strong enough you can get over it that's what that guys are grown up with for diabetes no we don't say that for heart problem we don't say for kidney if you're strong enough you'll stay with the pain you take medication no but this take- be strong be strong everything will be okay be strong yeah. i think that's a human condition no it's like it's it, it's hard coded in our uh, uh, body right to be, to everyone I knows think, yeah i don't think it's human condition i think it's learning and have we having learned that if something that is difficult happens we have to put up this strong mask and we have to push on maybe in some cases you have to push on there's no option but then you can stop and process it mm. you can sit and cry you can like talk to someone you don't have to always believe that what is happening to you doesn't not is not really happening sit and cry pe i wanted to have a chat with you i know we are recording but like just at like kitna roega yaar kitna roega there's got to be a time when you know in in like i'm, I'm being a little very crass here but like it's like even when when somebody loses a parent or you know or when somebody loses somebody or some somebody uh, i've had a friend who's lost all his money in the stock market recently it's like dip, yeah. gone gone mad right now you know um, like it, after some time the person is like kitna roega you've got to stand up and you've got to start working again that's where resilience comes in right that's resilience that's like our ability to stand back up yeah after right and that is also that is like so that is an aspect that we look at so but somebody is, has uh, to some cheerful uh, enthu cutlet has to come up to this person and be like listen i am i am shining the hopeful light on you saying that you need to hear this on your diaphragm in your eardrum you need these sounds to hit you that if everything is going to be okay and that you can start working tomorrow you know so you are his thought system 
oh i am become a support system right i am the bhajan mandali ka that the other friend hmm. i'm like yeah. Yeah. So, i like the bhajan mandali concept because i when i was in baroda in msu i've seen temples where this uh, the bhajan mandali and i've actually seen women come together and sing beautifully but apart from that i you can just tell that they've come together to giggle my mother in law is that way actually like you know she's 80 years old and they all come down like under the one version of a kitty party yeah it's it's there it's it's super original it's it's like what it's organic and it's not also this is pre whatsapp right this is not like let's just make one stupid group and crack jokes this is like let's take a rick meet at a park every day giggle laugh sing uh you know they don't even maybe discuss the personal private matters about stuff maybe they do i, I don't know <laughs> but <laughs> but it's healing you're right it's healing so now for oh yeah, for 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 individual well being there's one there's internal internal well being and then there is like social mm. well being so mm. that's where the support system comes in that's where we need to have a friend we need to have someone we can say oh my god i messed up and i think the world's going to come to an end and this friend will be like okay cry and then shake you and say get up true that's okay. it that's what it takes now what are you doing <laughs> it's like that's what i'm trying to that's what i now, you're assuming that everyone has that friend or yeah. you're assuming that uh, i'm able to speak it there's so much like let's say like i'm sure it's not that it. simple there are such complicated lives people have that you need to uh, you know slowly peel uh, or unpeel i don't know what's the right way to, but you to come to the core of the problem but one of the things that is healing about therapy is the therapeutic relationship where the relationship between the therapist and the client yes because it is based on trust it is based on confidentiality it's based on non judgmentality so the, a lot of times you are you might be sh- sharing things that you're really ashamed of or you're judging yourself for and then you're able to say it out and that in and of itself is, is like oh my it's called catharsis it's like ah oh, Bold. it's out there i have to carry it yeah wow yeah, yeah i feel like i feel like saying a few things but yeah but it's scary right because like it's live it's recorded and somebody's recording like the other person is recording and you don't know whether they're going to comment after you <laughs> after what you say they might like dislike they might comment they might subscribe to your idea you know and that's the scary part that shit they actually heard they actually heard me i just wanted to whisper it yeah, yeah. so wow i i want to ask you i want to ask you this this subject that we spoke of about uh the romantic idea of the traumatized artist yeah. why is this why is you know and this comes back to the first question i asked you is that the artist themselves seems to be traumatized and now this person is being a art healer for somebody else okay. it it so seems like it Let seems like a, thing that means i don't think artists heal anyone in fact artists can be really obnoxious people and we all know that okay so art, the your now there is the artwork and then there's the person so let's not mix the two okay so yeah maybe i make this beautiful work and i put it out there and somebody is being touched and whatever is happening by that yeah. work the work is doing it's whatever yes. that doesn't make the artist a saint or a healer let's i agree okay yes it, and, also because this people will be listening if you are going to seek a therapist ask for qualification ask if they have a supervisor ask if they are in therapy themselves these are three things you should do and you are allowed to ask so repeat that i am ask your th- ask this uh... ask your therapist their qualifications oh they have experience working with whatever it is that you are seeking support in the first do meeting start- yeah first meeting okay go on are they under supervision supervision is a senior psychologist who is monitoring their work and do they seek therapy themselves oh because you guys are going through a lot too yeah you and also to other people in as well your therapist is a human being yeah no, no but I'm, i mean you're and taking him so much it's not just that if i am saying you should take care of yourself i better walk the walk let me take care of myself first true so the three things that you you're allowed to ask it in fact we encourage to ask a therapist you should know you can also do a lot of people do a google search and find out whether i know or don't know okay so you don't just 
just don't go in saying this person's an expert ask true and that will also tell you a lot about the kind of relationship you're going to have with this person how the person responds to your questions true but that's you you you're putting the i'm going to say the the victim or the person who's the patient hmm. uh in a tremendous uh, position of power from the first they're already feeling weak they've come for help no they, it's like it are apne sadness mein apne depression mein where the person is going to be like first you tell me if you are okay then i will no, tell you to ask right. is do you have experience working with depression but it's going to take some time yeah for the person to come up to you and tell te- announce their own problem saying that i think i am in depression i have a friend so, who is pipe uh, who is bipolar it took a long mm-hmm. time to kind of figure out you know for that person to even tell me that uh, uh is going through a manic attack or that you know so i'm like why is this person driving the car so fast yeah i'm like hello calm down slow down and then you realize it's chemical imbalance so i just uh, it, it took me like 6 months when the person opened up to me i was like okay now i know this on medication or whatever but like this person is not here to be my friend this person is like here for a very it's a, it's a profession it's a service it's not a friendship let's be very clear yeah. so when i am going to a therapist i'm seeking something so i have a right to ask fair enough can you share maybe three or five uh cases that you have experienced that have really kind of moved you in a way where you're like oh this is the level at which somebody can go through uh, depression or a negative expression and that in a way that how art healed them maybe like they they expressed in a certain way uh so that the viewer can who's listening people who are watching this podcast will be like oh, okay now it makes sense to me it's like they had this problem they had a bunch of trauma they did this and uh, the inference was it resolved eventually in this way is there any example maybe so, even one you know just for so i i off like like i off my off my head i can't think of one whole thing but i can give a little bit of yeah in, maybe a little bit uh like uh, gender roles and this was a female client who was struggling with the idea of what is a strong woman because i'm feminist i have to do this but then i also want to be a mother yeah. what does that mean because like her idea not the feminism her idea was like i cannot be emotional so then we looked at we used art to look at what is strong what are emotions where do you feel them what does that mean and it was it went over almost two or three sessions where if this is emotion and this is strong is strong not of emotion to be strong to feel strong how do you then integrate so that was that is one very like a uh, simple example in that sense the other other example i can think of is someone who was who was diagnosed with depression and uh, this person had moved to an urban area from a two second tier city and there was a sense of loss of community and one of the things this person felt like this came up we were using the sand tray so the sand tray is a tray with sand and you have a bunch of toys and you just you can just do whatever you want with that so yeah. in that way the symbol of the tiger came up and then we used that symbol in dramatic work saying how does the tiger sit how does the tiger stand where do you feel the strength what about the tiger is so great so if you became the tiger tomorrow how would you behave you project and yeah you project or you absorb and then so projection is a part of art therapy projection sublimation is when you take your pain and you convert it into something else can you, can you explain Ex- projection now there are people i understand but there are people who don't understand it so can you simplify so one of the so for example like one of the things that we do hmm. i we do like let's say i have a bunch of postcards and i will ask my client to say which one is the one that you 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 are drawn to so they'll pick, let's say they pick up the symbol of the tree now the tree could symbol be a symbol of something for that client so then we look at what that symbol means to them now the training here is not the art the training is here first not to interpret the artwork not to project my understanding of the tree onto the client's understanding of the tree to be able to understand where 
this uh, tree means to the how, how, where, how, how is this tree here now who drew the, the person drew the tree they could have drawn the tree or they could just be an Im- so i have a stack of images that is just lying around and sometimes they'll pick up and say oh this image is really standing out today so what about the image is standing out okay uh, self portraits are very powerful we I, a lot of self how, how are self portraits powerful i find that interesting because you know the whole history of art is filled with self portraits and people have analyzed self portraits left right center you know, nobody knows what's right actually I, i don't know how how can you how can you um put your own interpretation over somebody else's self portrait how do you do it so one of the ways that i have done it is once the self portrait is made ask the client what they see hmm and then so it's always the the world the view is you have to understand i'm it doesn't matter what the drawing is ballpark what are what, the answers, what are the answers you are expecting no, i know you're not expecting anything but but you're not supposed to expect anything but like when you say when you say things like uh, what do you see it's such a random question to me hmm. like when hmm. someone does a when someone does a portrait you will ek to mere se karwaya abhi mere se abhi you're making me work again and asking me what you tell me what you see no it's like why are you asking me what i see but strangely they are willing to speak people okay no no yeah i'm sure so what are approximately what are the answers you get i've got no honestly i can't put it in a box or i can't say yeah. this but like the same image has brought out different expressions or experiences for them so sure. so it is very hard for me to answer your question in a one you know so there was a time in my life when i was t- like you know to make a quick buck my side hustle i was had a art studio where some kids and some people used to come home to do art when i'm huh. painting in my studio in pune i was huh. like okay, i'll take class for you and you know, these people came up to me like you're an artist just take art class also so i was like okay no kids you know kids get to like it gets crazy like in my studio i, I didn't want kids around and yeah. throwing stuff around so i took only 14 15 year olds so these two three guys were there you know, who wanted an idea admission or something like that so they were like just to to time pass so i was like okay i had a beautiful bunch of books so they were drawn to self portraits so i mm-hmm. asked these guys that's an amazing thing you know i like self portraits myself i said that's the mirror do a self portrait this kid one one of them he drew him there was a guy and a girl so the guy drew himself so fat so mm-hmm. chubby this guy was like a footballer mm-hmm. and uh, he drew himself like with big jowl cheeks and like a and i was like blown away i was like what the fuck have you drawn like i asked you to draw you in the mirror i have not asked you to draw some ronaldo how he looks now <laughs> okay yeah. or uh, like some you know some i don't know ronaldinho after a, a lot of drinking or something i have asked you to draw you this guy's self image is completely blew me away i was like he's like no that's me that's how i see myself in the mirror and i was like okay i was i don't know how to take this forward i was i was like i was like uh, i got you know i got a perspective so i i kind of know what you're saying that people see themselves differently that's just one example that i can think of is this something that is i should have sent him to you i i mean if he was working with a therapist maybe they would have taken that forward and seen what was happening there it didn't seem like a problem to him it was just that he's he see, he yeah body image is a very is one of it's it's a very existent and present problem mm-hmm. that all of us are facing yeah and post covid is the is is this is this are you getting more clients or are you getting more people because post covid you know this we we're, we're coming to the end of the interview also so i just want to like ask you a few um post covid kind of questions you don't have to answer it if you want to talk core about art and about your practice i don't mind that also because there's enough content out there on post covid kind of this enough no. like i want to celebrate now i don't want to be stuck in the covid tra- thing covid covid i was part of a few helplines there was really a need uh i don't know if it is post covid if there is post like now that people are stepping out mm mm-hmm. it was it was like an existential crisis and there was need yeah I can't hear you so 
yeah it is it was an ex- when when uh-huh. covid hit us especially it was an existential crisis we didn't yeah. know what was happening and there was need yeah and i'm very glad that people at least people who reached out were able to reach out and they had support yeah so that way yes but post covid i do i wouldn't know like i don't have i, I haven't read any numbers about post covid pe- members seeking for mental health support so mm-hmm. i don't want to say anything about it do you want to talk about i want to i want to ask you some things about you know gender uh, dominant narratives right now and uh, mm-hmm. power structures about you just okay. subject that you had mentioned while we were exchanging notes yeah you said you, so, you this this concept of power structures i'm just changing the topic i mean because it's i i think the covid thing has been overdone i just let's and if there is there something that i have missed out that is a, a, like maybe your core practice that i have not touched upon so uh, no we have we spoke a whole bunch of things when uh, so also lastly the mind la, sorry sorry the the, the mind body divide i can see this this point yeah. here Uh, so you so, can choose you can choose the top last three topics and i have a personal last question why not just yeah. bur- bury the past what if that's my question my question is just w- take an example of you know just fuck it just what happens if you just keep trapping all your trauma like you just bury mm-hmm. it bury it bury it bury it you just go ahead in life just skimming it mm-hmm. so three three great topics the mind body divide uh power structures dominant narratives right now and my last question would be unless you think of anything else about uh, coffee can trauma just keep putting trauma one by one inside okay so the mind body divide is also by art therapy really helps is because uh can you explain the, that first what is mind body divide it's the cartesian problem where you know the brain or the mind was considered to be more uh, superior to the body or we thought the brain controls the body yeah but increasingly increasingly there is research information that the, there is no like brain and body divide it's all one like information goes circular or it, there is a network Sounds like it's like sadguru <laughs> i don't know i i haven't thought that no no i've seen some of his content i people nowadays don't like him but he said some things in the past which sound like what you're saying it's like inner engineering and like uh, you know i don't know what to make of it but i'm i'm listening to you continue so like for example there is a axis between the brain the gut and the skin hmm. and what happens to one impacts the other so for anxiety we or we also look at gut health because you have as many nerve endings in your yeah. stomach or in your gut as your brain so we look at all of those things now because especially with art where we use the body like drama or movement or uh, dance you're using the physical body so you're not talking but you're bringing about he- transformation or you're bringing about healing i use healing like this so What? through the body so because again it's like it is a it's like self care is like i'll have a spa day oh but when i when we say self care we are not asking you just spa day is great please go get the spa day and shine and all but it also means you sleep well you eat well yes. you take breaks all of those yes so self care is but you exercise you it's much more than just getting a massage well massages are great so <laughs> that's great that's true yeah continue yeah so that's where so with like depression or yeah. even anxiety is a very physical forget trauma is a very depression anxiety is a very physical yeah. experience like Stop when i am ang- yeah. yeah 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 i am anxious my body is like Shutting. tingling yeah that's physical. so then you work with the body and then you go to the brain so you, it is not always it's not top down or a, it is a more dynamic approach that's where the arts really helps and with the power structures bit my so so like the oppression can is known to cause mental health problems yeah being oppressed so that's where the power structures come in that's mm-hmm. where privilege comes in like you have, we, very clearly we have maslow who is, who who had given us this triangle who said you know your basic needs are met only then can you go self actualize yeah. yeah. so 
for us to even start having this conversation mm. we need to have certain like base level systems in place like the mental health act has to be there the government has to recognize it societally we have to be able to destigmatize it like i have like i have clients who who know they have suffering who are suffering who have a diagnosis but because they don't have a voice in the family they are unable to come and seek help that's sad no now, yeah yeah now that is a power structure and stigma issue so one it is then it goes beyond the individual into a systemic understanding even the child grows up that way in that same structure yeah that's damn sad yeah so now, we all know families like that we all sometimes a part of families like that family society it's a societal thing it's a, it's a national so, subject it's a national issue yeah yeah it should be it should be taken up as a yeah yeah okay so uh, I'm, i'm my question the other question that i had is the mind body divide you said that there's no divide yeah so you answered that and uh, i had a question what happens if you why not just bury the past what if it's a what if question it's like what happens case like i'm i'm giving you a, uh, a thought experiment yeah. nobody comes to you you just mm-hmm. keep someone is bullying you you're oppressed constantly that becomes your reality you have no clue because that becomes your environment hmm. and you don't even re- you don't even uh, respond to the other awkward gesture people are like are you crazy this guy is this you you're going through shit right now this person is like what are you talking about life is great it's like your heroin addict or like you know if you were like where the where the uh, the morality or the ethics doesn't apply to you anymore it's just you've you've gone on the other side now sure. is there are the cases like that where is there a word for that do people become like that can you can that be passed on into the child yes. so uh wow like, asked you a long question you just said yes <laughs> wait i'm trying to like formulate and like break down the question yeah so let's say for forget psychology let's say my expectation is of myself is that uh mm, nice i will get married yeah expectation of myself is i will get married i will have a child and that's my expectation of myself for my life and then tomorrow you come in and say no anjana you can do these two and you can run a business i open up like shooting me in my brain saying like what do you like what do you mean i can do this and this and that but i have believed my whole life that this is what i can do true so now what i believe what i think and what i do are all interlaced they're not different so that is what you see in psychology as well to so be we like my thoughts my actions and my emotions are interlaced i think something i behave a particular way i feel something i rationalize it or i understand it in a particular way i'll behave so they're all like domino impacting each other now what hap- what happens when someone like that comes so we see that a lot we it's for everyone so we are looking at when you have to change a pattern mm. so maybe my pattern is that i i know i'm not supposed to drink three cup more than three cups of coffee but i end up drinking 10 cups of coffee yeah. a day yeah i how do i change that pattern so there is one is the understanding neurologically the more you do of something that brain pathway is strengthened strengthened and you more you're going to repeat it so then it is about breaking those behaviors physically and so then you can either activate it by manifested by a physical shift but you have to be aware in all this no yes so you're coming because something is amiss right you feel some you might not know what is wrong but like for example like self, like and so i'm cu- i'm also i'm sorry i'm also curious how does how does all this stitch together in expression how do people express themselves can you give me one example because it's still unclear to me as to like if someone came to do they draw something who how do you nudge the person to either dance or sing or write a song or to or to paint like how do you how do you know that oh this person you know what just do a rangoli every day maybe then they wouldn't come for therapy yeah. i'm yeah. i'm it's, it's a very very bad joke 
<laughs> no, no, yeah, but <laughs> so like for, for, for example with patterns let me start with an example there and then maybe we can look at the arts so like let's say i know yeah. i i'm good i want my aim is to be able to do this corporate presentation mm-hmm. and i prepare 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 but somewhere i believe that i'm not good enough mm-hmm. or i don't deserve this so i'll do everything but on the day of the presentation i will get up late purposely hmm not even purposely it's just like okay okay maybe i don't it's it's not like so aware so this person is basically sabotaging that opportunity because somewhere they don't believe that they deserve it my god yeah now that is it is not so i am giving you a very clear example but how it manifests is much more layered it's yeah. it is within a complex system of other things this individual is doing now where does this belief system come that they are not good enough so you're looking at all of those things or they don't deserve it or i cannot ask for a hike i have i don't think i should get more than so much money but then market value is something else like there there's interesting research and negotiation where women will always ask for less for the same job because somewhere they are already internalized that itna hi milega If I can, I'll share that podcast. It's a very interesting podcast. But the moment the women are told that the money you earn will sub- will help so many people, they're better at negotiating. Negotiating so for you, themselves. So you give them the the uh, end game, and you give them a higher goal of. So you kind of uh, channelize their 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 passion and their energies. The the research study this research basically spoke about like when women have to say I need to I'm going to get seventy thousand. let's say but then the job actually pays a lakh and you tell me go negotiate for a lakh i will not be i will not be able to do it but the moment i think oh if i get a lakh i can support my husband i can support my wife, uh, family i can blah, blah blah i will go negotiate so, so negotiating that, um, for self that's how guys think only that's how you supposed to think so There's so much responsibility we uh, all of us have i mean whether um, you're a guy or a girl You, I have the qualification. That... Wait, I have the qualifications, and I deserve one lakh. Oh. But I cannot go and say I have the qualifications. I deserve one lakh. That. That's a. Yeah, you might also. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Hmm. Yeah. So now, where in this example, where does the under belief that I deserve come, or I want, or I need? Hmm. Where does the I come from? Where does that understanding of the I come from? Okay. So what is like? then you look at a lot of other things that the person is doing in their life and see or self sabotage is a very common thing all of us do it at one level very subtle and very subtle mm. self sabotage hmm. i th- I, th- i think i've done it a few times <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and it comes from an underneath the action is backed by a thought process and an emotional process you might not be aware of it yeah then you start unpacking the pattern now you have the awareness of the pattern now you should change the pattern it's not so you must be someone who looks at like you personally anjana the the girl the the human being you look at people and being like if you go to a party and you'll see people you'll be like childhood issue drinking problem mother in law problem can you tell like that like no like ye ye, no. ye this character is No. <laughs> no you sit down with them and you're like oh what's happening then they say something you know like oh you okay. picked up the tree <laughs> or, or <laughs> you don't have a judgment so, like, right? i was in a fight with someone okay like a proper like full on like ugly fight and this person went like you are reading my mind because you're a psychologist i was really upset i was like if i could read minds why would i read yours <laughs> <laughs> so no we sadly we can't read yeah, minds no. or in a... it's about interpreting it's about breaking it down it is much more you you understand i'm not interpreting i'm just being yeah. i have the scientific or the training and then i'm just waiting there with my my training is not to judge true. my training is actually a lot of self work saying true. where is my judgment coming from true. what are my belief systems true. so that is part of work 
and in parties you know i just switch off and if people come and try to talk to me i say i'll give you somebody else's number you please go talk to them i'm here on a for party true uh, this is not <laughs> right <laughs> that's true allow me allow me one last question one last then then i will ask ask then i'll ask you to subscribe ask you to say subscribe to rgc plus and all that okay my one question to you is i just wanted to ask, because this is an art channel artists listen to this a lot right we have a lot of artists so i need to throw this question at it's like do you think artists are uh, doing uh, like condem- not, i know are you updated with the contemporary art scene do you, okay do you see do you see that there's a lot of uh, dark works coming out so do you i my question to you is do you feel that artists uh, you know help the world make a, become a healthier place or do you feel like artists are just offloading their issues out in the world and in a way allowing uh, more people to release their frustrations like that, it's like when i listen to a nikki minaj or when i listen to a song where somebody's talking about the uh, the drug scene in their neighborhood or if i see an artist who's painting um, uh, you know the war scene or they're painting you know i mean if you see picasso's uh, okay picasso's a crappy example to give because that time was different when the war and all was on but even in, during peace time artists still associate with uh, uh, partition or okay they have maybe maybe they go okay they are going through it but they have an opportunity or they have a choice right and so then why i'm why i'm asking this question is because the younger generation who watches the channel right they are in peace time they're born in a peace time they hmm. they relatively everybody is uh, uh, you know the the their parents money is compound interest everybody rec- it's not like we are living at that time so people but people still <laughs> yes this they were relatively there, there is uh, what's the word uh, disposable income okay. Dis- disposable income okay. and i would yeah. suggest that uh, there is no need to romanticize uh, sadness but people still do almost inherently almost almost as though it is like painting like if you see any if you ask any of the hobby artists like when i had a class right i had told you some, when i was much younger i on side hustle <laughs> when you ask some auntie used to come in or some uncle used to come in for oil painting and you ask them to paint something they used to paint like one one weeping flower or like you know one uh, they would paint poverty this is a recurring theme they would they would not paint a rich person they would paint a poor lady holding a matka barefoot walking kilometers in the sand uh, trying to get 8 liters of water in a bucket and they thought that is beautiful mm. no poverty is beautiful they'll paint a rajasthani woman with bangles they don't see the poverty or they'll paint a depressed crow or they'll find you know because they inherently feel that art is expression of sad, expression yeah. of sadness now i want to head on go ask you this question where does this come from is this healthy on the global level if everyone's doing this is this healthy because when i was a kid nobody asked me to copy a picasso they said copy a uh, you know mickey mouse or some shit like that that something i'm something sweet and slowly if you continue doing a mickey mouse they'll be like hey he's not serious he's not an artist <laughs> he's a fucking comic comedian right but um, you need to you need to take your clothes off you need to be sad you need to kind of expose yourself your vulnerable your vulnerabilities you need to paint i'm not saying i'm not saying all of this i'm saying these are like the things that are coming back to me whenever i remember my childhood where all the uncles aunties the whole world in general was like are tune abhi tak kuch aisa intense nahi kiya tune it's like so I, it's it's that kind of where i'm coming from it's a pretty crappy place and i know people who have authentic nuanced expression and ideas i consider myself to have the same expressed nuanced ideas about life but the the younger population try just mimics that so i just want to figure out how do you find yourself how do you how do you start saying yes okay i do accept my sadness or my happiness and that i'm a positive person and that i should i have the opportunity to paint a positive side to add some color distribute love how do you find yourself and why romanticize sadness these are my broad points thoda lamba ho gaya but <laughs> why why romanticize sadness honestly i don't have an answer It's something oh, on, man. this is a long I question know. i thought you'll go for it <laughs> <laughs> but maybe maybe because maybe we respond to sadness is because we don't know we don't have the language and the space to speak about it we don't like go and tell all like we don't have language saying oh today i feel good we don't usually say i'm feeling really sad 
then we feel something is off or when we say let's say like if something happened and i had tears people around me would feel awkward and uncomfortable that right. suppose me smiling yeah and they would be uncomfortable maybe maybe we in in our daily lives we we don't have that space and then art becomes that you know container where it is it is uh-huh. allowed to feel sad mm i never maybe, saw no no you you got a point because you can't cry in office you can cry in your studio no you also it's just if we don't like i don't know how to explain like we when someone starts crying we start panicking we like we have to fix this it's not like maybe this person is crying let's me just sit with this person and once this once they stop crying i can check kya hua maybe they just needed to cry and express it but we feel awkward when the other person is crying we get worried we get anxious so we are not but if the same person is laughing and joking we are okay so somewhere that expression is allowed and sadness is not allowed and maybe it gets allowed in that in this medium in the world and saying so like it's pretty i i that's a good point yeah it's a good observation i didn't see i never saw it that way i'll use that in another party sometimes i'll say that i'm like do you know this <laughs> that was a good point can you please yeah. we are at the end of the podcast unless you want to say something more i don't have any if you feel like you uh, have missed out on a point or something like that can you please look yeah. can you look can into I... can you look into the webcam and yeah. can you please ask the whole world 50 years from now to subscribe to art history plus to say say thank you say what say it and say however you would say it like comment so, and subscribe it's important yeah so i feel okay i can add a little bit of what i want to say and uh, yeah then... look look in that look in that black camera and say it. so it looks like you're looking straight into the camera Okay so what we spoke about with Vaibha or what both of us were discussing in front of me is really touching the surface and there's lots more there lots more questions anyone interested in research just needs to google and you can find tons and tons of work that's being done in the contemporary urban indian or rural setup of india uh having said that i really enjoyed today's conversation and i hope you guys enjoyed us chatting and ranting and complaining and laughing so like comment subscribe to art history plus and the thing i said about uh, uh mothers being a tough job or something don't hold me against that in the future okay i said it kind of in a way to uh, come to a point of how men don't get expressed i i just thought about that it's been playing at the, the whole podcast i'm like someone's going to take this clip out <laughs> and going to screw me over in the future with this it's a it's a sensitive subject these days i i don't know it's it's in people have been discussing this and also continue i don't know if you want to add this but then like you know with mothers we are looking at postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety mm. but that doesn't get recognition then there something is wrong with the women they should just be happy mothers and they should be like oh yeah that's a real thing right chemically if women go through a lot i have some of my family who went through that and uh, it kind of scares some my wife too also it's like it's scary right scary it's scary. and it is purely a lot of times it is purely chemical and sometimes it's if you have had a new human being who can't speak and all they do is cry and poop yeah. of course it's stressful course it's, you've given birth to another human being man it's like you're a goddess right now and you've gone through so much what, right what you just went through a whole yeah like, it's and, came out of so and and you're saying love would heal it this is is my last last love heals like if if i as a husband like if if tomorrow my wife gave birth to a child and this happened to her for whatever reason what do i do i unconditional so love that, brought what how does unconditional love is the emotion how, how does this manifest as behavior yes the behavior is what will help so so in that sense yeah i mean like so mul- multiply the kisses and hugs and <laughs> and and pick up the diapers and change the baby uh, and give her a okay, break come on i meant that also but i just <laughs> see that's the thing right that's what i was trying to say emotion and action so yeah. when people say love is healing it's not like oh i love you and it no because i love you i do things that's i will true. support you you got me on that yeah no no yeah, yeah totally i totally buy your point i totally buy on that bombshell 
Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much. This is amazing because after saying subscribe and everything, we've continued the conversation to another question. So. <laughs> I feel I feel like asking you two more questions, man. Okay, chalo, nothing. I will, we will take this forward. Do you want to say? Uh, I will leave your email ID at the end of the video. Sure.